Welcome to the League of Women Voters of Snohomish County for, for candidates for Snohomish County Council Districts 4 and 5. I am your moderator, Jody Troutwine. I'm the outgoing voter services chair of the Snohomish League. The candidates are for the council districts and for District 4 are Jared Mead and Brenda Carrington. For District 5 are Sam Lowe and Brandy, excuse me, Brandy Donaghy. And Brenda Carrington is not participating in this forum. The League thanks all the candidates for running for office, for their willingness to serve the community if elected, and for participating in the forum. It is the policy of the League to be nonpartisan. Therefore, we neither endorse nor oppose at candidates or parties. We do take positions on issues which we have studied and on which we have reached consensus. The ground rules for this forum were sent ahead of time to all candidates. And let me briefly explain the question and answer period rules. Opening and closing questions have been shared with the candidates. Other questions have not been shared. However, we have made each candidate aware of issue areas this forum is likely to cover. And we thank all the community members who sent us recommendations about local issues. I will pose the questions. Each candidate will have 60 seconds to respond and 90 seconds will be allowed for answers to the final question. I will state this change at that time. We are using a countdown timer visible to all candidates. It shows elapsed time and alerts candidates when there are 15 seconds left. And when time is up, time limits on answers will be strictly enforced. When you see the timer turn red and hear the chime, you are done. I will change the starting order for each question rotating through all the candidates to ensure a random and fair sequence. The order for the first question will be to begin with Mr. Mead, and then I will go through the other two candidates. All right, question number one, what qualification and experience make you a strong candidate for this position? Mr. Mead. Thank you for the question, and I first just want to thank this is the first question. Thank the, the league for putting on this. I enjoy these every year, and I, it's a shame that we have to wait till we're on the ballot to do these because I learn something every time. Um, so thank you all for putting this on and thank you, Jody, for being our moderator and for last year being our moderator, which you ran very smoothly. So I appreciate that. I expect the same, same result this time. So what makes me a great candidate for this position? Well, one, uh, I've been in, I've been fortunate enough to be in this role now for the last year and a half. I was appointed in April of last year. Before that, I served in the state legislature for two years. And before that, I was on the Mill Creek City Council. So I have some experience that I bring to the table when it comes to not only local government service, but also in the state legislature, which has given me the ability to, to balance the different needs and the way that different government organizations interact. And certainly on the county side, uh, there's a lot of work that we do uh, with local governments and with state governments in order to find funding for projects and do joint projects. And so I think my experience in those different roles uh, it really suits me well to be positioned to be your county council member for the next year. Thank you. And the next, the question goes to Sam. What qualifications and experience make you a strong candidate for this position? Well, thank you, League of Women, for hosting this forum. Aside from already being a proven successful county council member finishing my first term, I have a master's degree in organizational leadership that gives me formal training I can use and makes me uniquely qualified in proper organizational structure and leadership. Owning and operating a successful small business right here in Snohomish County for a decade helps me understand what small businesses face and the tax burdens placed on working families. I was elected to and eventually leading as council president for the Lake Stevens City Council, helping constituents through local issues. This also gave me a foundation and the experience needed on budgeting, zoning issues, GMA, uh, and in addition to preparing me to be a county council member. My compassionate leadership demonstrated while chair of the Snohomish County Health District while tackling vaping issues also puts me in a leadership position on, uh, for county council. Thank you. Now, Ms. Dottagy, the question, what, is, what are qualifications and experience make you a strong candidate for this position? If you will unmute. First, again, thank you for having us. I uh, really appreciate the opportunity to speak. Um, so I am running for county council for a number of reasons. I'm experienced in working with a diverse group of individuals and being able to communicate 
in ways that are generally successful. And this is something that I think we need given the growth and increasing diversity of our county. I'm also a veteran with practical experience in a variety of fields. And I am personally invested here. I had a degree of business in, from University of Washington, Bothell, and a focus in management information systems. I am a community volunteer. I serve in a number of leadership positions throughout the community on boards and commissions. And I am thoroughly focused on making sure that our county is as strong and as resilient as possible. Thank you. Okay, our next question, we'll start with Mr. Lowe and move to Ms. Donaghy and then to Mr. Mead. And that's this question. What are the biggest challenges facing the county and what are its greatest strengths? Well, our biggest challenges for my district uh, is public safety, transportation, and fiscal responsibility. Uh, the transportation issues with a uh, hashtag finish 522, the trestle, highway two, highway nine, uh, have been difficult for many years. And, uh, my constituents expect to see those fixed and they wanna see those fixed. Uh, public safety is also extremely important too. We need um, to see uh, deputies arrive at, at people's homes when they're called. They don't wanna be waiting for 35, 40 minutes or even an hour or two for a deputy to show up when, when they're faced with a life or death situation with an intruder. And then fiscal responsibility. My, my constituents uh, are definitely overtaxed uh, you know, uh, property taxes have gone up significantly uh, over the past four years, and uh, that's just not good enough. Thank you. Thank you. And now we move to Ms. Donaghy. And the question is, what are the biggest challenges facing the county, and what are its greatest strengths? I think probably the greatest issue that we face in the county is community diverse or community resiliency. And I'll explain what I mean by that. When I talk about resiliency, I talk about community strength and the ability to bend instead of break when uh, an emergency strikes. We saw with COVID that we were not prepared for addressing such a broad Alert issue. From calendar. And given this, event. apologies, given Alert this from calendar. League of Women Voters Forum. <laughs> my apologies. So my alerts are off. My computer is still talking. It's just like my son. Um, <laughs> and excuse me a second. Timer, could you give her about 10 more seconds? Thank you. Sorry about that. I appreciate your uh, support there. Um, so I think we need to work on community resilience and that means being able to be self-sufficient and also be able to meet the needs of our community members. There are various ways that we can do that and it actually encompasses much of what we see every day. It includes uh, addressing the housing crisis so that people are more stable and have a place to be and um, decreasing the level of homelessness that we see. It includes increasing um, the efficiency of our traffic. Oh, Sorry, the, the time is up now. I couldn't okay. reset it in time, but- Oh, it, sorry. Okay. No, that's okay. Thank you. Yes. Sorry for all that confusion. Okay, uh, now the same question to Mr. Mead. Um, what, is the, what are the biggest challenges facing the county and what are its greatest strengths? So I think the biggest challenge facing Snohomish County, which definitely affects my district, uh, maybe even more so than the rest of the county, but the whole county, is growth. So Snohomish County is the fastest growing county in the entire state. And I'll, I'll fight Pierce County Council members who say anything different. Uh, over the next 20 years, we're, we're estimated to have another 250,000 people move to our county alone. And we're a county that's less than 900,000 as it is. So that's a huge exponential increase in, uh, in human beings moving here. And so that growth comes with growing pains, things like what uh, Council Member Lowe referenced with uh, transportation needs and infrastructure needs and things like uh, Brandy just brought up, Miss Donaghy brought up with uh, needs for housing and needs for resiliency as we grow. 
And so growth absolutely is something we need to focus on. And I think our biggest strength is the fact that our county is a, a politically purple county. We're willing to work with each other, uh, set aside political differences and, and dig through some of these really tough issues together. I think that's what- Thank you very much. Okay, and we're gonna be moving on to the next question. This will go first to Ms. Donaghy, then to Mr. Mead and then to Mr. Lowe. Okay, here's the question. What initiatives would you support to address homelessness, drug and alcohol abuse, and mental health issues? Big one, I know. That is a good question, though, and it's a really important one. We need to really start focusing on ways that we can start creating proactive policy to identify the causes of these issues and stop things before they happen. At the same time, we also need to be in crisis mode to address these issues because they are a crisis right now. That means that we need to um, identify ways that we can work with both public and private organizations to create more options or more access to uh, affordable housing throughout the county and doing it in such a way that is a little bit more creative than what we've been doing previously. Um, not only looking at multifamily homes, but looking at other options that might have less of an impact um, on the environment, but also still serve the needs. We need to work on actually creating more beds and more opportunities for people to have access to behavioral health and uh, dependency care, because the truth is we do not have this infrastructure to Thank you so much. And now the question moves to Mr. Mead. It is, what initiatives would you support to address homelessness, drug and alcohol abuse, and mental health issues? So one minute, that's going to be really tough. But uh, yes. I think one of the main things we need to focus on is housing. That's going to help uh, with a cascading effect, all of the other uh, issues that you brought up. I believe in, a, in a hou the housing first concept, which is basically the idea that you're not going to be able to help a person who's dealing with a mental health issue or, uh, or, or a substance abuse issue or dealing with poverty issues uh, until they have a safe place to rest their head. And so housing first, and there are so many ways to tackle housing. I could do a 30 minute thing on this, but I think there's two main concepts. One is helping reduce uh, people that end up falling into homelessness. It's much more expensive to find a place to rehouse someone who's become homeless than it is to keep someone in their house. So things like zoning policy that promote density so we can have more housing stock and more inventory so that the cost is not so high. And then also the budget is a reflection of our values. We need to invest in our human services in order to help the people who are currently finding themselves homeless, find shelters, get the resources that they need. Um, there's a lot of detail and that's very broad, but I can't do it in a minute. So. Thank you for trying. And we'll move on to Sam, the same question. What initiatives would you support to address homelessness, drug and alcohol abuse, and mental health issues? Well, I really like the Housing Hope model. Um, you know, I've toured the Housing Hope uh, Center in Monroe. Uh, we just opened one in Twin Lakes there. Uh, I like the wraparound service model that they have, and uh, I think investing more in that. Uh, I have a history of supporting uh, Claire's Place in Everett. Uh, I think that's been a great uh, help uh, for homelessness and, and low barrier housing. Uh, just recently, we had the two 16 bed facilities at De Denny Youth Center uh, that they just opened up on uh, August 1st. Uh, in fact, uh, we just the other day or yesterday voted for $3 million to go to Linwood to help with uh, their uh, criminal justice center, which will have uh, some treatment there also. And so uh, those are all important. Uh, we need those. Uh, I think investing in community support centers like Take the Next Step in Monroe, which is something I've championed, uh, our embedded social workers program are, are also necessary too. Thank you. Thank you very much. And now this next question, which we'll start with Mr. Mead, is a related but not completely the same. So I want to give you a chance to answer. If you feel like you've answered this in this last segment, that's fine. You just let us know. The question is, what measures would you support to keep housing options affordable in Snohomish County? So somewhat connected, but not completely. And we'll go first to Mr. Mead, then to Mr. Lowe, and then to Ms. Uh, Donaghy. No, that's great timing for this question. It's almost like you planned the order of your question. So well done. <laughs> um, yeah, I, how's Housing is absolutely the most important thing for us to be focusing on when it comes to the growth, when it comes to all these other problems that we're talking about. 
And there's a bunch of ways to address housing affordability. One of the main ones and what I'm a most proponent of is trying to prevent people from finding themselves homeless and being priced out of our region. And the way we do that is by increasing the stock of housing in our county. Uh, right now, we have a lot of single family homes and very little space, i.e. buildable land, uh, to build and develop new housing. And so we need to make sure that with the limited space we have left, we're building the right types of housing, that missing middle housing, the townhomes, the condos and apartments, and yes, some single family homes. Uh, but not just the single families, because there's too many people that are going to be moving here that we have to plan for to only build these $1.5 million houses. So it's about diversifying the stock that we have and finding ways to work with developers with density incentives and things like that to build the right types of housing. That's how we're going to deal with the affordable. Okay, thank you so much. And the question moves now to Mr. Lowe, and it is what measures would you support to keep housing options affordable in Snohomish County? Well, I think Jared articulated it very well, but it is all about supply and demand. And uh, we know that the Growth Management Act uh, squeezes our population into the urban growth areas. And uh, we need to have the right balance of housing uh, countywide. We need to have starter homes. We need to have middle homes and, and, and yes, the upper end homes too, but it's all about having the right balance. I think one of the things that we've worked on as a council uh, just recently is ADUs. Uh, accessory dwelling units. Uh, I have a daughter that just got married in June. Uh, she's struggling to find a, a new home. She's a school teacher. Her husband's an electrician and, uh, and, th and they can't find a, a place to buy. Uh, they can't afford a place to buy. I think ADUs are a great option uh, for uh, our, our new families, but also for our senior citizens who don't want to necessarily go into assisted living or senior housing. But want to stay close to the family and live in uh, an ADU. Thank you. Thank you. And now to you, Ms. Donaghy. Uh, what measures would you support to keep housing options open in, in affordable in Snohomish County? I, I think we need to start looking at different models for housing than we do typically. Uh, we have this tendency to look at things like multifamily dwelling units and um, the single family homes as one is for um, lower income, the other one is for those who have more. We need to start looking at things like um, co-housing communities, um, tiny homes and various other options that will help not only um, create more availability of housing without taking up massive amounts of space, it'll also help expand, um, expand that community connection and expand the number of actual physical communities that we have with those interactions. The other thing I think we really need to spend some time working on is addressing how our community transit system um, leaves a lot of spaces that are less accessible because by expanding that, there are more places that we can go. Okay, well, thank you. And the next question, we'll start with Mr. Lowe, then go to Ms. Donaghy, and then end up with Mr. Mead. And this question is, what are the issues, if any, in the county arising from the pandemic? How would you address them if you believe such issues exist? Well, we definitely have issues from the pandemic. Uh, you know, obviously we received CARES Act funding last year, uh, this year and next year, ARPA funding that'll last uh, for a period of four years. Uh, and we've taken that as a county council and started helping small businesses, uh, small business grants, uh, one of the early things that we did was we invested that money into our local boys and girls clubs and our YMCA locations for daycares for our first responders and doctors and nurses. Uh, one of the things that I championed uh, was food bank funding for our underserved communities. And uh, that was something that I noticed uh, we didn't have enough funding for this last year. So I brought an initiative before the council to put forward an extra $1 million uh, to those communities. And uh, that was a very successful program in, in helping people that are struggling with food insecurity. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll move to Ms. Donaghy. Um, and the question is, what are the issues, if any, in the county arising from the pandemic? How would you address them if you believe such issues exist? I think that is kind of a loaded question because I think the pandemic has kind of uh, exacerbated every kind of issue that we've had. 
up to now and just makes things worth going forward. Um, in reality, it exposed a lot of the discrepancies that we're already experiencing and it just highlighted some of the things that we've lost. So moving forward, I think what we need to do is we need to address the real issues of a lack of childcare because so many women have had to leave the workforce. We need to address the, um, the number of uh, emergency workers that we have, as well as medical workers, we are really short on the numbers that we need. We need to find incentives to get more people into those areas. The same stands true for teachers um, and also the infrastructure for people to be able to access um, the internet and such in various areas. All of those things have shown just have been demonstrated to be really lacking um, during the pandemic. Thank you very much. And then we'll move to the last person for that question, which is Mr. Mead, and is what are the issues, if any, in the county arising from the pandemic? How would you address them if you believe such issues exist? Yeah, no, of course, we've had a lot of issues that have arisen from the pandemic. And I, I agree with uh, both my colleagues who have spoken now about some of the issues that they're talking about. I think one of the things that I've learned the most throughout the pandemic, and, and it highlights one of the biggest uh, needs and gaps in our systems, is that we don't have a good way of finding people where they are, meeting people where they are to figure out what they need. There are so many needs. Uh, Ms. Donahue was talking about childcare and the teacher shortage. And, and uh, Mr. Lowe was talking about, uh, you know, the small businesses who are suffering and, and all of that. And that's absolutely true. But it's been really difficult as a council member trying to figure out how to spend some of the relief dollars to survey the communities and, and, and find the people who need most and what they need specifically, whether it's housing issues, uh, mental health issues, the small businesses who are suffering. So I think finding a way, a better way for us to communicate with the public and get feedback on where the needs are is something that we really need to work on. And I think that's the biggest highlight. Um, Thank you very much. All right, moving on to a new question. It'll be Ms. Donaghy first, then uh, Mr. Mead, then Mr. Lowe. And this question is, what is your strategy for working productively with your council colleagues and members of the public whose ideas are different from yours? Ms. I, I don't know everything, not even close. There, everybody has had different experiences in different education and have learned different things throughout their lives. And because of that, I recognize that the first thing I need to be able to do in order to work with people who may not agree with this same things I do is to actually listen to them. I'm of the opinion that a lot of conflict really comes from the inability to really listen to one another and understand what we're saying. And so we have a tendency to be a little bit more reactive and a little bit more dismissive than we need to be. By recognizing that we all have these differences by building cultural competency, we can absolutely work with one another efficiently and effectively, because when it comes down to it, I truly believe that our goal is always to serve in the best interest of our communities. Thank you very much. And now this question moves to Mr. Mead. What is your strategy for working productively with your council colleagues and members of the public whose ideas are different from yours? This might be one of my favorite questions and one of the, the my favorite things to work on in elected office is working with people who I disagree with. Um, over the last year, uh, one of my council colleagues, Nate Naring, who will be, I think, interviewing with you after this, a Republican who I disagree with policy-wise on a lot of things. If you look at our voting record in the last year and a half, we voted opposite on uh, many, many things uh, over this last year and a half. However, we have a, been able to respect each other in a way and approach conversations, uh, assuming good intent and, and, and understanding that when we disagree, it's okay. It's because we're coming from different perspectives. Um, we've had such success doing that, that we actually have gone around over this last year and, and done joint presentations to high school government classes, probably 20 of them over this last year, and talked about like civil discourse and how to work together and communicate with people you disagree with. Um, I think that's one of my strongest traits and one of the things I enjoy most about being in local government generally. Thank you very much. And now we move this question to you, Mr. Lowe. What is your strategy for working productively with your council colleagues and members of the public whose ideas are different from yours? Well, in my role on the county council, every 
every decision that I want to make, I need the approval of two Democrats or two of my colleagues, whether it's two council members or a council member in the executive. And that's assuming that uh, my seatmate, Nate Nering agrees with me. But, uh, you know, one of the, the first things that I dealt with coming into office was the courthouse project it was very divisive. Uh, I worked with council member Terry Ryan, and uh, we were able to come to a solution to get the courthouse project, which saved the taxpayers about $100 million. Um, another thing is, uh, you know, Jared talked about working across the aisle. Jared and I have different political views, and we've never hung out together outside of the office, but I believe my defining moment was working with him last year during the mid-year budget cuts. And I think we both can agree we built a working trust from that moment of, uh, of a heated working environment. We came out with a plan that worked for all sides. And I commend Jared for, for really coming up and working hard on that. Thank you all for that question. And our next question, which will start with Mr. Mead, then go to Mr. Lowe and go end with Ms. Donaghy. What are the most pressing environmental issues our county faces and what would you propose to address them? Mr. Mead. That's a big question as well. I hate that these are one minute long. Mm -hmm. So when we're talking about development generally, one of the biggest things that county councils do is comprehensive updates. We do them now every eight years. We change the zonings. We change the, the potentially change the UGA boundary lines. Uh, and it's, it's to help uh, it's to help direct where the growth is going to be. And a lot of that is to protect our environments. So Nahomish County, the reason that we have so many people moving here and why we're going so fast is because we're so unique in what we offer. You have Everett, an urban density core, right next to, you know, 15 minute drive away from a mountain that you could be totally isolated uh, and, and forests, et cetera. Uh, my district is so much different geographically than District 5, for instance. Um, as far as how it looks and it's beautiful. And so we have to we have to think about those things when we're doing our zoning, when we're doing when we're considering our uh, urban growth areas and where we want to focus our transportation projects. So there's so much of it, our creeks, uh, our forests, everything is, is it's all. A, we really have to focus on all of that. As we're making decisions. Thank you very much. And now we we'll move to Mr. Lowe, same question. What are the most pressing environmental issues our county faces and what would you propose to address them? Uh, a great question. Uh, I ran my own painting business for a decade before taking office. And uh, one of the things that really struck me is going into people's garages and seeing all the stored paint that was there. And uh, so one of the first things that I did as I worked with Executive Summers and uh, doing paint recycling at the county so we could keep all this paint out of landfills and uh, repurpose and reuse paint. Um, one of the big initiatives I worked on this last year uh, I identified that our sheriff vehicles over the past 10 years have used 3.4 million gallons of fuel. And so I led the effort this last fall to uh, begin the process of electrifying our fleet. Um, and we'll see that over the next uh, uh, two months here where the, we'll have a, a new electric vehicle in the sheriff's office. And hopefully that'll be the foundation for more going forward. And then one of the things I recently did was a conservation futures as chair uh, saving uh, 15 acres at Haybrook Ridge. Thank you. And now we move to Ms. Donaghy. Um, what are the most pressing environmental issues our county faces and what would you propose to address them? You know, I think it's hard. This is one of those areas where it's difficult to put um, priorities on things specifically because it all matters and it all has an impact going forward. But we can do more than one thing at a time. We have... Um, as we grow, we see uh, a lot of our green space disappearing. And so that is definitely an issue. It impacts our climate. It impacts how our, um, our rain reacts with the land. It impacts even our experiences in our growing areas. So that is one thing that I think we need to absolutely um, consider how we are impacting our local environment as we are building and creating. Also, we have um, some amazing waterways that we need to be able to keep clean. When we have people traveling all over and stuck in traffic, it's having a major impact on our air quality. Realistically, there's too much to hit in one minute. Thank you so much. You know, I will jump in here and say to all of you, we appreciate what you do in a minute. 
it is a, a long time and a short time. So thank you for all you do tell us, even though it's limited. Okay, we're moving on to question, uh, the next question, and Mr. Lowe will go first, then Ms. Donaghy, then Mr. Mead. And this question is, what should our county's plan be to deal with existing or potential racial inequities? Another great question. You know, I think equal access and fairness to each individual and each uh, people group in our county must be the hallmark of local government and of county government. I think one of the defining moments for me last year was when we had uh, the county council town hall on racial issues. And uh, that, was a, that was key for me in helping understand some of the inequities uh, that members in our community were facing. Uh, through that process and through uh, Jared's leadership, uh, we, we added more people to the Law and Justice Council, seven new positions. And, uh, and that was a great addition to, to help people that felt like they didn't have a voice, have a voice uh, in some of these issues. Uh, I regularly attend the Monroe BIPOC group meetings and uh, uh, I learn a lot from those meetings each month. And I think as uh, Brandy said earlier, we as uh, leaders, we need to be better at listening. And I think listening is the most important thing that we can do during this time. Okay, and we move to uh, Mr. Mead for that question. What should be our county's plan to deal with existing or potential racial inequities? I'm happy to go, but did you wanna go with Brandy or Ms. Donaghy first? I'm sorry, I jumped over. I should have, yes, I missed that. Thank you for telling me. Yes, Ms. Donaghy. Sure, so. I checked you off too soon. I think there are a number of things that we can do and nothing is actually going to solve all of the issues that we have, but they can start to move us in the right direction. We need to have um, our leadership develop greater comp uh, cultural competency, which means that a basic understanding of how to communicate and recognize the variations in culture between different groups that really impact the way that we are able to communicate and react to one another. We also need to start meeting people where they are. And that is recognizing that holding a Zoom doesn't mean that you are inclusive of those who um, often don't have a voice. It means actually going out to the community, identifying who is being left behind and making sure that we can work with their community leaders to ensure that doesn't happen again. Because so many people are already disenfranchised and feel like they don't have that voice. We need to work at it to fix the problems. Thank you so much. Okay, and now, <laughs> Mr. Mead, your turn. Um, what should our county's plan be to deal with existing or potential racial inequities? Yeah, so, so similar to my response to our the biggest problem highlighted with the pandemic, and also similar to what Ms. Donaghy just brought up, is we have historically as a government, not just in Snohomish County, uh, but governments generally, don't ha have not historically done a good job at reaching people where they are, reaching communities that look different than the elected representatives where they are to hear what the issues are that may matter most to them and how we could positively impact them. And so uh, what Councilmember Lowe had mentioned about doing a, the, the two, I think it was like six or seven hours, he can correct me, uh, our town hall, where we listened to the community talk about racial issues. Then what came of that was a couple different policies. One of them, uh, Councilmember Lowe also referenced, which was adding community members to the Law and Justice Regional Council to advise the Snohomish County Council on things we can do in the law and justice realm. Um, and we've talked through the budget last year using that information to invest, for instance, more in mental health uh, crisis responders in the law and justice realm. And there's a ton of policies. That I think that's one of the main things. We can do Thank you so much for that. And now we move to our final question where you will have 90 seconds. I know you're not used to that, but I think you will rise to it. And uh, we'll let Ms. Donahue go first, then uh, Mr. Mead, and then Mr. Lowe. So, Ms. Donahue, this is the question. What additional issues or information would you like to bring to the attention of the community? In 90 seconds? Yes. Oh boy. <laughs> you know, I think um, we have a real opportunity in Snohomish County to start to change the way that we are doing things because our policy tends to be forward thinking as any you know, good policy has to be. But we are not necessarily being as thorough at identifying all of the ripple effects that policies can have, which ultimately 
tends to create uh, situations in which we end up in a crisis response or in um, in uh, leaving people behind, which is something that we really should not be doing. Um, ultimately, we can make our community so much stronger, more effective. We can build our um, we can build our economy and uh, build stronger, more resilient communities if we not only learn to work together, but also make an effort to no longer create policy that will impact community members negatively without also designing a, um, a way around that. And what I mean is we need to start really bringing our community members into policy in a way that hasn't happened before by giving them all voices. Thank you very much. And now the final question to Mr. Mead, what additional issues or information would you like to bring to the attention of the community? So is this also our closing? We want, this is kind it of our is. answer as well. Yes. Great, thank you. So the, the main thing I've been focused on this last year, uh, there's a, it's been highlighted through the pandemic, but something I've been passionate about for years uh, and even more so now that I, my son was born and my daughter after that, I have a two and a half year old and a six month old. And my wife and I just went through, because my wife went back to, went back to work last week. Uh, she's a school teacher and school started and we've been struggling to figure out daycare slash child, uh, early education for our kids, mainly for my son. And that is one of the biggest gaps I think we have in our society generally, but specific to Snohomish County as well. Uh, in, for instance, in the Edmond School District, 42% of students enter kindergarten not meeting 100% of the, the, the metrics as being kindergarten ready. Uh, statistics will show that children who enter kindergarten not at the, all the standards are more likely to drop out of high school, not go to college, less lifetime earnings, more likely to end up in jail, more likely to die earlier. All of those things can be taught, can be looked at statistically through the lens of how prepared they are going into kindergarten. And yet we have not made a massive investment like we have in K-12 with McCleary five years ago, like we did with higher education with uh, Drew Hansen's college bill two years ago. We have never made a significant investment like that of that, that, that size in early education. We need to, that needs to be a huge focus. I'm heavily focused on that on the council level. And I think that that should be a focus society-wide. So early learning, early learning, early learning, early learning um, is the biggest gap that we need to start focusing on that we're not currently. Okay, thank you so much. And now we move the, you get the final word, Mr. Lowe. Um, what additional issues or information would you like to bring to the attention of the community? Well, thank you again for hosting this uh, wonderful forum. It was great to hear uh, from, from both candidates. Uh, I think, I don't want to beat a dead horse, but it's public safety, public safety, public safety. Feeling safe in your home and in your community is still the number one priority. Feeling welcome and treated fairly is also important. Uh, my, my community service leadership, both as president of the Lake Stevens Rotary Club and as a private citizen volunteering in my local community, uh, is opened up some unique opportunities for me. I've also, I'm also the current chair of the State Transportation Improvement Board, working directly with transportation funding needs, both locally and across the state, which my district desperately needs. Uh, I'm proud and to be supported and endorsed by our County Sheriff Deputies Association. They believe I am the right person for public safety. I'm also endorsed by our County Firefighters, IAF Local 2597 at Payne Field, and the largest fire district in Council District 5, uh, Local 2781, Snohomish Regional Fire and Rescue. I also have the endorsement of our county and city employees, AFSME Council 2. All these labor groups all endorsed my campaign before the primary vote, and they believe I'm the best person for the job to represent them at the county council. I have the experience and proven leadership both politically and with my community service, uh, and I have proven I can work collaboratively collaboratively and effectively with our uh, county council members. Thank you. Thank you so much. And thanks to you all. The league thanks all of you candidates for joining us and for running for office. A recording of this forum and others will be available on the League of Women Voters of Snohomish County website and YouTube channel. And you can find the links at our website, which is LWV, League of Women Voters, snowho.org. 
We encourage the uh, listeners to explore additional information about these candidates and all others. The Snohomish County Voter Pamphlet will be mailed starting October 11th. Vote411.org, sponsored by the League, is another good source for nonpartisan voting information. General election ballots will be mailed on October 14th, and election day is November 2nd. Please vote. And this concludes our forum. Again, thank you all for joining us.